How do you praise for a wall mural? Just like praising everything, it depends on how much you are in demand. If you're in high demand, you can charge more than someone who is not in high demand. How much experience you have. If you've been a muralist for 30 years, you're gonna charge more than somebody who's only been doing it for three years. Um, I can tell you some artists will charge $6 a square foot or $10 a square, square foot. Um, others will charge $30 a square foot. Huge difference. But one thing to note is it's really good to have a structure, like a square foot price. Because when someone says, hey, how much does it cost to paint a wall mural? I will say, how big is the wall? If it's a 10 foot by 10 foot wall, it's gonna be this amount of money. If it's a 60 foot by 15 foot wall, it's gonna be a lot more. Um, but, but have a structure like a per foot structure. I find the middle of the road is about 10 to $15 per square foot. But of course, as the wall gets bigger, that price can get exponentially high. The other thing you want to take into consideration when pricing a wall mural is adding extra fees for extra circumstances, such as an outdoor wall mural is going to have more challenges than an indoor wall mural. You want to charge an extra fee if there's a great inconvenience. For example, if your client says, I need you to paint it within two weeks and you can only paint between midnight and 6 a.m. because we need to keep the cafeteria open during that time period, then you wanna take that in consideration. That's a huge inconvenience for you and anyone that's helping you. So you wanna charge extra for that. If, um, if the wall is not ready to paint, and that's always like one of my first questions, is it ready to paint? Or does it require prep work? I will charge extra for prep work, but, but preferably I, I tell them, <clears throat> we don't wanna do the prep work. You need to hire somebody to fill in holes, primer it, get it ready to paint. You hire some guy to do that because we're not, we're not, uh, that's, we're not in the business of filling holes in walls plastering and all that really they really should have a professional person prepare the wall so it's ready to paint a couple other things to think so sometimes you'll have somebody ask you to provide you with a sketch before they hire you i don't recommend ever doing that for free unless unless you're freely trying to get this job and they say, well, we're gonna, we're gonna go after three, three artists, get three different sketches and make our choice. And so that's a sacrifice you make. But to create a sketch that is so good that it's gonna get you the job, it can take you three, four days, depending on, on what it is. And if you're very established as a muralist, you don't need to go through that sketch process, you can say, look, here's my portfolio. You can see what I'm, uh, you, you can see what I'm capable of. And you either like my work or you don't. Um, so if you're established and you have a portfolio, you can do that. And that's the approach Drew and I take just because we don't, we don't really have the time to, uh, we're usually, Drew's usually pretty booked out. So he doesn't really have the time to do work on spec. But I do tell people, look, if you want him to work up a sketch for you to consider, we'll charge you a sketch fee. Depending on the sketch, it could be $500, it could be $1,500, just depending on how complex it is, what they're asking for. And then if you choose Drew for the project, then we will deduct that sketch fee from the overall price. And I've actually done that before and it works. Um, one concern that comes up sometimes is, well, what if I provide a sketch and they don't hire me, but they take my sketch and hire a cheaper, cheaper guy to do it. That's a concern. 
And there are a few people who will be unethical and will do that. So you prevent that by making it very clear. I own the copyrights to my sketches. My sketches may not be used in any way, shape or manner without my written consent. And you have that in your proposal, in writing, and by paying me the sketch fee, you agree to this. And also on your sketch, write uh, the letter C in a circle around it, which means copyright, and then your name and the date. So you further illustrate that point. I just had this conversation with a guy the other day. He called and he wants Drew to put in a proposal to do a mural painting at a convention center. And he's actually handpicked Drew to do this, so he's not going to any other artist. And he said, well, I want Drew to come visit, and it's out of town, so it requires a flight. I want Drew to come visit and walk the grounds with me and then work up some sketches. And I said, we're happy to do that. I said, but let's, let me get you a written proposal. We'll get a deposit from you, and then we'll buy plane tickets, come out, do the sketches. And he said, oh, well, the convention center is not gonna pay a deposit. They won't pay you until after the work's done. So when people say that to me, I say, well, we, ha we have to work this out because we're gonna be putting out all this money to come there. We're gonna be putting out at least five days to work up concepts. And that is a week of work time missed. So we at least have to be paid up front for that. And he said, oh, well, you know, uh, he, we just can't get money that fast. And I said, well, why don't we put the request in now? And then soon as you get the money, then we'll get a plane ticket and come. So, so I just really hammer this to people. I, I try not to show my frustration with them. <laughs> and, I, and I try to be really gentle and explain to them that because of the schedule that we keep, Drew works on projects as the deposits are received. So it's, it's sort of like it goes in line. And we can bump it to the front of the line if, it's a, if, it's a, 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 uh, if it has a really fast deadline. But for us to do that, we have to get the deposit up front. Now, what kind of deposit should you get for a wall mural? Some artists do 25% up front, uh, some do a third. We ask for 50% up front to book the time and to buy the materials. And then the full balance is due on the day of completion. Because when we're finished with a project, we don't wanna be chasing down money, especially if it's out of town. And the way I make sure that we get paid on that last day is Three days before the last day, I will say, um, I'll remind them. And if the owner or whoever's paying us, whoever's cutting the checks is not there, and usually they're not, I'll text them or call them and say, hey, I just wanted to remind you the full balance is this, and please have it for us no later than 5 p.m. on Saturday. And I just remind them and remind them. And I'll remind them that morning, hey, what time do you think you'll be bringing the check by? The reason I do this is because the squeaky wheel gets the check. I hear from a lot of artists that say I didn't get paid and they get really frustrated. They get really hurt. Just last night, a friend of mine who I love dearly told me a very, very sad story about how her heart was broken by a client friend who didn't properly pay her for her work. And uh, it doesn't have to be that way. That you really have to communicate. So here's a question. What if you're not known for murals, suggestions for getting started and getting those first jobs? Okay, if you're not known for murals, hopefully you've got a few murals under your belt because it's really important that you have photos of murals that you've created and it helps even more if you have testimonials from the people that you painted those murals for and have those photos on a web page on your website. And if you don't have a website on your Facebook page, just have them somewhere online that you can send links to people. Also, 
take the time and make up a little like PDF brochure that shows murals as case studies. So um, if you're not familiar with a case study, a case study is just a fancy way of telling a story about one of your clients. And it doesn't matter if it's a paid client, you don't have to mention that. Let's say you did it for your sister. Um, you can still call her a case study. And um, the case study would be fairy wall mural in a child's room. And you would have a photo of the mural, the finished mural, and you would tell a professional story. The client, let's say it's your sister, you don't have to say it's your sister. The client wanted three happy fairies to signify her three daughters in their bedroom on a, on a 12 foot by, 12, by eight foot wall. And she wanted soft blue, purple, and pink colors in it. And then you talk about the process and how long it took to paint it and how you worked up the sketch. And if you have a photograph of the sketch, you put the sketch in the case study as well. So, um, so that's, that's how you show a potential client what you're capable of. Now, how do you get started in painting murals? Have a few case studies online on a piece of paper and start looking around your local area or any area where you uh, think that a business would benefit. So what kind of businesses benefit from wall murals? Well, corporate, corporate businesses. Also, if you like painting children's themes, pediatric dental offices are perfect for wall murals. Pediatric, uh, 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 pediatrician doctors offices are perfect for children's wall murals. Um, there's a lot of corporate businesses. Let's say there's a, uh, let's say you specialize in a certain theme. You might want to find a business. Uh, let's say you love painting themes of dogs and cats. You might approach a dog store or, or, or a pet, pet food store or a veterinarian building, something like that. So just think about what you specialize in and then go to these places and, and maybe print up a little flyer and leave it with them. And remember that you have to hit up 10 to 20 people before you get one bite. It's kind of like fishing, right? You'll have like 20, 30 fish circle, circle your fish line, but you're not gonna catch all those fish. You're gonna get one fish that goes for it. That's how you do it. Here's a question. I have lots of theater set designs. Think that would translate. Are you asking me if it would translate to mural work? Um, I don't know. If you think it would, you're probably right. I mean, I'd have to see it to, to really give my opinion, but my opinion doesn't even matter because you know what? You're creative. You're going to come up with ideas to, for things to do with your work that other people aren't going to think of and you need to go with your ideas because you're the artist that's about it if there's any last minute questions i'm happy to answer them but um trying to keep this short today i will be back tomorrow instagram live and before you go look for my book art money success i do cover a lot about murals in here and making sales how to sell how to cold call and all that stuff. You can find it on Amazon. Just when you go to amazon.com, do a search of Maria Brophy Art Money Success. Thank you. I'll see you all tomorrow. Ciao.